Around the NFL Podcast. Signed Geno Smith to a record-setting deal. From the Chris Wessling Podcast Studio, it's Around the NFL. I am Dan Hansis, and I come to you in a studio filled with some heroes, Greg Rosenthal, Mark Sessler, and a very special guest. I believe this is her third time on our program, and we're very happy to have her. The great Mina Kimes. What's up, Mina? Hi. I was trying to remember when my last appearance took place. It was definitely Mm pre-pandemic. In person. You did do some pandemic shows. I I remember you did one with Colleen and Claybon one week. And there was Mm -hmm. one with the the three of us. Right. Okay. Inner Monologues was a fun one. Inner Monologues. Inner Monologues. It's a very strange episode. In person, you made an impression that first time. Well, speaking of being in person, I have seen Greg, but I haven't seen you two in person for the listeners who don't have the visual, you guys look tan. Mm. You all look like you have been vacationing like in the Mykonos or however you say <laughs> it or a, something. I, I have <laughs> attempted to put sunscreen on daily and it does not seem to affect affect no, no, what's no. happening. Tan. I didn't say burned. I feel burned. Right. I you look feel great. hot all the time. I don't mean hot rested. to try. I mean hot he, he like fell internally asleep hot. at a Hollywood hotel pool uh, for like uh, six hours. And he still two, has well, that Two day. months ago. Yeah. Um, it legit that burned my burn. calves. And I'm like, continuing my transition to become my father, which is uh, I'm working outside and working up a lather in the sun, stupidly not wearing a hat or any. And it just <laughs> Freckly? I see. I get those That's freckles. The, I get those the too. Irish in me coming out. Anyway, Mina, you know Mina Kimes. Mina's a star. NFL, uh, NFL on ESPN. She's all over the place. Mina Kimes show. Uh, and what a treat this is for football fans, really. Let's be honest. The world over. To have a single podcast with two of the top ten analysts in pro football. <laughs> well, four, really. <laughs> According to the London-based prestige publication, The Guardian... I don't know. Sessie list. made it. Sessler. I mean, how about that guy? Who is that guy? <laughs> Mina He's number a top two. Top 10 football insider. Damn right he is. Dan Levitard. Uh, Mina number two. ATN number seven. And, you know, not since, Mina, the Stephen Urkel uh, showed up on Full House in 91. Has there been a crossover <laughs> episode with mm. this much juice, this much appeal? What's so I'm Urkel. Well, or you could be that or Stephanie <laughs> Tanner. I mean, it's your choice. Urkel feels like the move. Breakout star. Uh, kind of you've become bigger than the ESPN NFL mm. operation. You're, you're such a star mm. there. Like Urkel overshadowed all the Winslows. Yeah, I like that. No, no, I liked Urkel is my <laughs> podcast Mina. Stefan is television Mina. Ooh, oh, I like right. that. Little, Stephane little binary. Urkel sure. for yeah. people that get those references. Um, I hope so. Uh, and by the way, I know you've been a regular um Visitor on the Dan Lebetard show with Stu Gotts. Do you want to? Some people call me the peacemaker on this show. <laughs> I smooth things over when when necessary. Greg and whatever whoever he's feuding with <laughs> any given month. Um, the you heard Stu Gotts there, of course. Uh, maybe you should hear it again. But, little, but I think it deserves another a little yeah. context. Yeah. They were making fun of Mark for some reason. Well, for I don't know. Sessie made it. Sessler. I mean, how about that guy? Who is that guy? He's a top ten <laughs> football insider. I don't think mm. we needed the context. I think it's all laid out. But, uh, Mina, do you do you want to play Peacemaker in this scenario? Okay. I don't know why he singled you out, to be honest, out of the group, personally. I, I, I want to think it's random, but I, part of me thinks maybe not. Targeted. I think, I, yeah. Knowing Stu Gatz, and I know him pretty well, I think it's your name. He probably just thought Sessy or whatever. Right. What did he say? Sessy. He called Sessie. him Sessy. And that is 1,000%. that He likes... He would just zero it in on your name. He saw the nickname potential. You guys have names that are not easily mocked in the same mm. way. I think that's probably it. That's I, I, I wouldn't take it that's, personally. No, that's, that's a logical, generous yeah. way to look at it because there's a lot of people on the list. Now, I guess it could have just been any of the three of us, but he chose you know one of us. as. Let's the, not twist person. the knife, Greg. We've been down this road. <laughs> but J.B. Long, when we were at Rams camp, was very complimentary mm. of you, and I feel like that kind of made it even Steven in a lot of ways. I think he was attempting to curry favor, um, but I, he already had my favor, so um, I, you know, I appreciated it. All right, Mina. Another another Rams employee here doing the preseason games this year with with Andrew Whitworth. Yes, That's very nice. exciting. Yes, I wanted to. Uh, I went to Rams camp. I want to say a week ago, actually, from today, and Siciliano was there. One of the Andrews, but Big Andrew. Sorry, I'm not trying to refrain from calling them Big and Little Andrew, but Big Andrew. <laughs> well, one is big. Was I think he's it's enormous. 
um, I wanted to do a group photo where I like cut his head off. I had like mm-hmm. a whole humorous, but he wasn't, he didn't make it that day. Mm-hmm. So yeah, he wasn't able to do the group photo. <laughs> <laughs> circle back around on that. Tough. But um, yeah, so check out also Mina on Rams preseason telecast. She's all over the place. Uh, today's show, fun. F- Greggy, you're excited because we're going to talk some over-unders on the 2022 season. We're going to do it with a little twist, a little pizzazz, do a draft style. So we're all, all four of us are going to take turns picking over-unders that we're comfortable with going one way or the other, obviously. And then uh, we'll track these. These are things we'll track and, and circle back to um, later uh, in the season. But before that, let us hit the news. Thank you, everybody. It's great to see you today. And I'd like to thank Roger uh, Goodell, uh, Commissioner Goodell. Mm. Roger Goodell. What, what is the background there, Mark? Well, that is the, um, that's Rob Walton, the new Broncos owner. And that was his oh, introductory, man. you know, greeting to the fans oh. in, in the world. And he utterly botched the uh, but name of the commissioner. That's an amazing Did flex. he botch it, though? Yes, that's, yeah. a, that's a power move. That's, that's a power mean, move. I mean, he, he's worth $70 Hello. billion. So, he is, he, you know. Right. He is worth something like three times as much as any previous NFL owner. And that wasn't like oh, I'm nervous speaking in front of people and said his name wrong. He said it multiple times. He just doesn't know the man. He does not know Roger Goodell. Also, let's name. understand the hierarchy <laughs> of our league. Uh, he's Rog's boss. That's true. So he, sure. I remember we had a, a really bad boss a long time ago in the newsroom who's no longer with us. Well, he's still on the planet, but I don't know where he is anymore. Good luck to him, whatever he's doing. Um, <laughs> it was his first day, and he was very much um, you know, laying – he, made, he was making it clear in the newsroom with this energy that he was the boss and he was looking to fire people and he was looking to clean clean up the ship and make it his own. And I was like, oh, geez. I, we were very young. Uh, yeah, a, be- a, copy a, a bellowing voice uh, intentionally. You know? And I was like, oh, shit, I better go up to this guy right. and introduce myself uh, you know, and play the game. Corpo game, you know. So I go up to him. I say, hi, how you doing? Uh, nice to meet you. I'm Dan. And he just looks at me and he goes, do you have a last name? <laughs> I was like, oh, God, this is going to be horrible. Well, and it was. That invites, I think, the obvious question, which is, did Roger Goodell correct him? <laughs> because, I, okay, so so someone whose mm. name has been mispronounced since the day I, you know, entered this earth, um, <laughs> I until recently, maybe until adulthood, when adults would say my name, teachers, referees, authority figures would say my name wrong, I would just let it, let it slide. What did you get? What were the... Oh my God! Kimes? Kimes? No, no, my first name. Oh. Both, really. Mina? Ki- ki- I got some Kimes. Mina, Mina is a really common one. Man, Straight Mi- up, Mina. Mina. You've got. You've not dealt with not. I mean, the the person saying Mina has not dealt with a lot of our language. If that's what they're coming out with, but <laughs> Nina, even though it's right there. But I wouldn't. Being the mm. beta that I am, would never correct them. Oh, Goodell's so. not. Goodell's not correcting them. Not even privately. That's too embarrassing. <laughs> I mean, to Rob Walton, apparently, Goodell is just an underling, so there, it would be hazardous to correct him. Um, anyway, a new owner enters the NFL. Let's uh, get to the news, starting with bad news around my Jets. Why can't the Jets get through in August without something awful happening? I don't know what that's all about, but Mackay Becton, the former first-round pick who missed most of last year with a knee injury, the hope was he was going to kick over to the right side of the line and get things back on track. Well, that's not going to happen because uh, he suffered a fractured right kneecap during Monday's uh, practice, and the injury, according to Rap Sheet, is one that will likely end his season. Um, Robert Sala talking about Becton, who's obviously been scrutinized and criticized uh, for work ethic and other issues. Uh, Sala came to his defense uh, on with social media in this world, we we um, dehumanize these athletes in the worst way imaginable. And uh, Makai has walked in this building and he has taken every single punch you can get from every which way. And he shows up and he works his tail off and he grinds every single day. He shows up to camp and he's fighting to get himself back in shape. He's got videos of him vomiting and people are throwing shade and he's limping and he's doing all those different things and he's fighting to, for this, for his family, for himself, for his teammates, for this organization, for this fan base and he's doing everything. And then everybody wants to drop him like a, a, a wet rag. That ain't the case. There's a lot of frustration, Mina, around Becton amongst Jets fans because he was so tantalizing when he was on the field 
as a rookie, and now you wonder what the future holds. Uh, Salah said that we love Makai. His ride is not over, but this is another huge setback. A huge setback for him personally and obviously the organization, given that he was such a high draft pick. But I would venture to say for Jets fans, if Dwayne Brown steps in his left tackle, that that, that seems to be – he seems to be the seems prohibitive favorite. He's direction. there. I don't think it's – that much of a downgrade for Zach Wilson this year if you have Dwayne Brown manning the left side, George Fant, who's been rejuvenated in New York, uh, on the right side. That's not a bad tackle combo. I, I, I see Jets fans panicking about this season. And, oh, this is going to set back Zach Wilson. And I don't think it's that bad if Brown plays. He played at a pretty high level last year and has been good for a long time. They're just getting those former Seahawks. I mean, no, their offensive line is a strength. It, the Dwayne Brown thing is a little strange to me. Joe, Joe Douglas was quoted saying on Tuesday that it's like the wheels are in motion. I mean, I've never seen a free agent spend like a scrimmage on the sidelines right. before yeah. <laughs> signing and then had like a two-day sit-down. My only uh, guess could be that Dwayne Brown doesn't want to sign until the official training camp portion of training camp is over, which is – now, basically, it's it's today, Wednesday. Training camps are generally any around the league. And that he's going to join the team. He just didn't want to like do it too far in front of the season. Or else none of this really makes sense. But yeah, if you have Dwayne Brown, that's, that's probably about the median expectation or better of what you could have possibly expected uh, from Becton, except he's a lot more reliable. You actually expect him to play. I, I think if you're a Jets fan, because I, I think you're right. If, you, if Dwayne Brown signs and he's adequate, you're good. Uh, but they're reading things like this from The Athletic. It said, after a completion to Denzel Mims, Wilson was sacked on four consecutive dropbacks. On a few of them, so many pass rushers got to Wilson that it would be unfair to even credit one player. I just feel it's like it all, the wreckage of August for Jets fans has been long. It's been storied. And can you get out of this with an adequate offensive line? If so, that would be a major victory for the I, Jets. I think the Jets could have potentially a good offensive line. That was a bad practice. There's been plenty of positives. It's been much better than past... August, in terms of practice reports, remember the green and white scrimmage a year or two ago when they got shut out by like the second team defense? Like, there have been positives. And I think no. with. It's like, no, nobody remembers <laughs> that except right. for you and other Jets oh, fans. Uh, we remember. Iconic moment. Uh, but <laughs> I will, I will there say. Snoopy Bowls, though. Can you, you could there are Snoopy start. Bowl losses. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is for Jets fans that are even more optimistic than me. This could be seen as a crushing loss because you're imagining the version of Beckton that was going to play mm-hmm. this year was the guy that flashed in 2020 you're like oh he was gonna be that guy but there are a lot of bad vibes around Becton obviously uh going into this Mm. season and last year so yes I'm with you Mina this could be something they can recover from but obviously but the team seems to have come around and and appreciate Makai's like effort this over the past 40 days like he he busted his ass to get back into shape we seem trying, motivated. Remember they're that trying t-shirt? to be nice you know. humans to him. Then the financial aspect is going to come up right. quickly on them next well, year because they'll have they to. They won't dec- pick up. That they'll option. decline his fifth yeah. year option, and it might partly be because their defensive line is so good. That's the number one reason I'm, you know, excited about the Jets is like they're so deep up front. Maybe that's why they're crushing the. Are uh, they going to be in your line. over under draft? Do you have them? Hmm. No, I don't. I. I don't feel right, well, that strongly hold about the, the Jets. I'm just saying, like, when I saw like Jacob Martin is, like, their seventh defensive yeah, lineman, I'm like, dang, they're pretty deep. Another former Seahawks legend. In other news, NFL Network's rap sheet reports Bears linebacker Roquan Smith has requested a trade. We all know uh, Mark uh, Smith's ability and the fact that the Bears are rebuilding. You'd want a 25-year-old to be part of the rebuilding process, but he, there is some bad blood and it goes back to some negotiations that he feels haven't been done in good faith. Well, he's his own agent. And I, I think part of that would be, you know, the Bears on obviously a new regime. They they want, Ryan Poles says we want to keep him. They, they, they did make an offer. I think you're looking at somewhere between Shaq Leonard and Fred Warner on where like this contract would go. And I wonder if you're your own agent that, you know, you're hearing stuff that your agent would protect you from. Like, we, we do value mm. you, but there are aspects of your game and our and what we're going to do with our defense. And with, with Fred Warner and Shaq Leonard, those were existing regimes that knew what those players were and knew that, what they would do in their scheme. I think with Roquan Smith, it's gotten a little rocky because this is a team in a rebuild that can't really project what Roquan Smith will be exactly in the, in the new defense. Maybe it's because I had to do 10 
shows about where Debo would go, but I just Ooh. don't want to play this game no, of no. like believing a trade request, um, especially when I, I do think the team is going to try to keep him uh, for a few reasons. I, Robert Quinn makes sense for this team to trade because I do think they could get something pretty sizable back from him. They're obviously not a contender. He's 32 years old. Roquan Smith, I don't think they would get huge return. Um, hmm. Some of that's just positional value to me and, and destinations. And you've got a defensive head coach who's coming from Indianapolis where the star of his defense was a will linebacker, Darius Leonard. I have to think he's coming in. He sees Roquan Smith, who is the best player on this defense outside of Quinn, as the centerpiece. It just doesn't seem like Ibrufus, obviously he's not making the shot, calling the shots here, but I just don't really think he'd want to move on from this particular player. I, I saw some analysis, and I think it was Sam Monson, although – Sometimes the PFF guys blend together. I apologize Whoa, for that. Wow. I'm just saying, wow. like, well, here's they all have PFF wow. in the in the Twitter name. So you're like out picking up your Still, da- daughter at beach hey, camp you, or Brent. whatever, and you just see a tweet. It's just like it sort of, of runs, yeah, it of sort of r- runs runs into each other. But the the idea was like, I, it makes sense that they're not going to extend too far to sign Roquan Smith. He's an off ball linebacker, and like by the time uh, they're actually good, like that's not a position that you pay a lot of money for, and I totally disagree just because I think it's it's much harder, as the Bears have shown, to find players that are worth spending on than it really is to work around the salary cap. And they have virtually no players to spend big money on. And this is one of them. Like, the point is to keep your good players. Don't they have, like, $500 million in cap space next year? They're, they're, yeah. They are set up to make a lot of moves. But, I mean, Ryan like Poles is Giants, saying we want to like keep them. They're like a sneaky, cheap, big market team that ultimately they don't spend as much money as they possibly could, especially this year. We mentioned Shaquille Leonard. I don't Greg. Oh, right. pardon me, Shaquille. Yeah, you admit. Yeah. Oh, you said Darius? I said Darius. Uh, All right. That's a it's, fine. It's like the Washington football team tax. You, San you Diego. Can, initially, yeah. yeah, you get it. Shaquille. Yeah, Los Angeles Chargers, you get a little leeway. I think there has I mean, to be like an acceptance that it's going to take people time. It's like when you were young in the in the year, you have to put your date on your schoolwork every day, sure. and, the, and the year would flip, and it would take me to like January 25th to figure out what was going on with the year. I also think Washington football team is fine to just keep. Like you can just keep saying that. People get it. Yeah, you don't need to, it works. You don't need it to still move on. It's technically standard. true. Uh, so we mentioned Shaquille Leonard. He had the back surgery, and you know the hope was he's going to be ready to go, but he still doesn't have a timetable. And people should know that follow our league. It's August 10th. It's my wife's birthday. Happy birthday, Emily. Happy birthday, Happy Emily. Birthday. I'm going to pick up some Prosecco and some nice cheese. Emily. I've been told not to. <laughs> I've been told not to talk about your wife, so I will. Uh, well, respectfully, that, you can. Justin isn't yeah. normally yeah. that creepy. That was a callback right. to a time before when he was creepy. Notice how I said my wife's name, Emily, and then when you brought up your girlfriend's name, it was Jessica, and it I, freaked everybody. I out. continue to think this is being over exaggerated. I don't think so. It's never happened. I don't think so. <laughs> Anyway, we are getting to the point. Mina's like, can I call a cab and get <laughs> We're getting to the point on the calendar uh, where these injuries, we're getting closer to week one. So with the fact that Dar- Shaquille Leonard doesn't have a timetable, Mina, that's not great for the Colts who really need him in the middle of their defense. Yeah, this injury freaks me out a little bit. Um, and, you know, back generally, but then when you hear the, the back might be connected to the ankle, I- I hope I'm not misrepresenting. I, I'm most definitely misrepresenting the actual medical nature of what's going on. But it is one of those injuries when you read every report, it, it does make you a little nervous just because it doesn't seem as clear cut as maybe some others. Um, and then, of course, yeah, where we are in the season, I would be worried. Um, I like this Colts defense a lot. I think the front could be really exciting. It's Gus Bradley. We know what he wants to do. Uh, but... If you take out Leonard, even though you know they've got a couple of other decent linebackers there, I it loses a lot of the sizzle for me. Right. Plus, like exciting might not be the word that like fans of the last few Gus Bradley teams would would use to describe right. his defenses. They struggled, and so you know Matt Eberflus gets gets a job elsewhere. And the the wording around this, it was our Cam Wolf, uh, who I believe has been a guest on the the Mean and Time Show featuring Lenny. As a, it was our Cam Wolf, I think, that sort of broke this, that that the wording around Darius Leonard is at some point during the season. It doesn't, oh, wow. It, to me, the, like, and, and this is going back to the surgery, reading between the tea leaves, like, he's pretty likely, I think, to start on PUP, and that he, 
there's certainly no guarantee that he's even coming off PUP after four games when he's first allowed. So a Gus Bradley defense, which is the Seahawks defense, works if you have stars, right? And they do have stars on this team. Yeah. You've got Stephon Gilmore now back. You know, Rocky Sin left. They who they say has been like dominating in practice. And I, I looks like he's pre-injury player. form, basically. I mean, I, you know, you think of him as being more of a man. Uh, corner, but this is obviously going to be a primarily cover three. But you do, he has both. I think you do need like a shutdown corner, uh, and then you need that four man rush. They do have a four man rush. They've got DeForest Buckner on this side, who's better than any interior defender the Raiders had. And then ideally, you'd have okay, well, who's the Bobby Wagner? That's Leonard. But if you take out any of those stars, the defense doesn't really protect its players, and it suddenly starts to fall apart, which is what we've seen in his recent stops. I like it when the Seahawks fan and Mina kind of comes out. Like, he's, she's got to stand Listen, up for this Gus. Listen, this is the only defense. <laughs> no, I'm not standing up for it. This is the only defense in the NFL left that plays this way, yep. right? None, none, all of the former Pete Carroll disciples, including Pete Carroll himself, has embraced a Fangio style defense in Seattle this year. Gus Bradley is the last. Fangio. So, <laughs> so, who gets whispers? Just Vic Fangio and our producer's girlfriend. Okay. That's and literally the, the latter one is a new development. development. Where yeah. is Vic Fangio right now? He's got to be like. Vic's cash and checks. He's got to be grumbling. It just can't be happy um, sitting on the sideline. Good news for both Mark Sessler and Packers quarterback Aaron Rodgers, whose use of the uh, drink ayahuasca, which is a. <laughs> Hallucinogenic. Right, hallucin- yeah. Drink is an interesting. <laughs> From the earth. During an off season retreat is not. Considered a violation of the NFL's drug policy. Rogers talked about it on the Aubrey Marcus podcast. Uh, he went to Peru, maybe with Mark, maybe not. Why is this good news for me, according um, to you? And uh, he won the MVP <laughs> before that season and then won it again after that. And according to this write up on ESPN, ayahuasca is defined as a, and Mark can tell you this, but as a psychoactive beverage <laughs> native to South America and is often used for religious, ritualistic, or medicinal purposes so mark this is this is excellent <laughs> excellent news for the packers and the mvp and of course for you and your continued employment here i'll accept it i mean it's from the earth i don't think it should be on a banned list um <laughs> I, he's, he's not taking it during uh you know game preparation or game right. weeks it seems to be when he's off on his own in peru and stuff like in hollywood at a right hotel that's or self-exploration or, yeah. or, or or in a hotel he said uh it was the best day of his life Better than winning the Super Bowl. Have you ever, has, if you've ever taken mushrooms, I will just say this. Right, this go goes on. back many, many years. Um, you are put into a different reality, and I can totally understand. Also what, from the earth. Also from the earth. And I, I can see why he would call an experience like that the most mind blowing experience. Right. He said, he said when he opened his eyes, it felt like opening his eyes. It was a wild interview. And then the host, this, it was a guy named Brandon Marcus. I had to listen to this because I don't know. It just, it sounded so wild. Aubrey he Marcus? Said, he said it from the Aubrey Marcus podcast. Okay. I guess that's it. I, Brandon <laughs> just Marcus. Just another BFF guy with a beard, Greg. <laughs> Brandon, Brandon Marcus is a, a, a former producer. Of he our, still works yeah. here. I yeah. saw him today at the commissary. <laughs> yeah. For, the, all right. Uh, he said it felt like having a hundred hands all touching you at the same time. And I wasn't sure if he meant like literally there were 50 people there because he said it was a big group thing, but it felt like a hundred hands on you all at once and it felt like pure love. Yeah, that I was never that dude like in college uh, and I got scared off when um, a buddy of mine told me that he went down this road of, you know, natural products uh, from the earth (laughs) and uh, he said that uh, Jay Leno on TV was the devil talking to him. I was like, all right, I'm going to Right, that was stick the, to uh, Bud the, Light. The host yeah. answered his story by saying that when he took ayahuasca, he like imagined every different way to die possible. Most of which like included bugs like crawling yeah. out of his eyes. I had so a friend a good um, trying to convince a group of us in a farmhouse when this occurred that his father um, invented two objects: one TV guide, which was not true, <laughs> and two wood. <laughs> and, but he wood. made a convincing case for a amount of time. I feel like we were talking. Tra- I had a beautiful <laughs> two or three weeks. Kind of taking acid what? on and off for like 20 years ago, and it was it was great. It was fun. Mina, your turn. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Mina's like I'm literally uh. the biggest star in NFL media. I got to get out of here. Let's take a, a quick break, finish the news, and then uh, get to everything else. All right. Welcome back. What is where is the Mina Fame meter at? By the way, I know this might make you uncomfortable, but I'm just curious. You're Low. here with us. Low. Two years since we last saw you all together here. Like, if you go to Chipotle or something, are people like, "Hey, Mina, do you get that a lot here in LA?" It, uh, sports bars. 
definitely sports bars. Well, you're probably on one of the televisions at the sports bar too half the time. I would say airport sports bars yeah. too is probably mm. that's airport sports bar in the middle of that of that Venn diagram. And, you know, the <laughs> airport sports bar just can't, I love that. Yeah, can't handle that. Um, Seems annoying. Pretty low though. That, I don't know. I had trouble getting in here. <laughs> that that's true. We did. I didn't. We did not know the security procedures. Did you hit You're, him with a "Don't you know who I am"? <laughs> <laughs> You're the first outside the building guest uh, we've had. So uh, no, you know, Greg we, we observed firsthand. And maybe this is a little bit connects to what I said about my name, my uh, meek obedience uh, in, in any situation where I'm confronted with a, a barrier. Yeah. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. I probably shouldn't be here. You know, <laughs> I'll drive home. All right. <laughs> we, we have a similar sort of fame, but it's just only directly outside of a London football game stadium. <laughs> right. We're NFL basically game. the that's Beatles right during there. Hard Day's Night. And that's Very hard. Day. Exactly. Very hot. Yes. Um, all right. Uh, finally in the news. Yes. The Hard Knocks. Training camp with the Detroit Lions season premiere was Tuesday night. Of course, you know the listeners that Colleen Wolf and I launched a new podcast, which you can check out in this very feed. Um, so I don't want to um, say anything else about it because I've said enough. But I'm curious if mm. you guys watched it and if you had any takeaways. Let's play a little bit from our friend Dan Campbell from the premiere. The last thing I'm going to say is this. There is no light at the end of the tunnel. There is no light. There's a song Metallica has, No Leaf Clover, and it says, man, when it comes to the soothing light at the end of your tunnel, it's just a freight train coming your way. So if you're seeing a fucking light, it's a freight train. Just put your head down and go to work. It's about to be fun, man. It's about to be fun. Yo! Wait, but it's not gonna be fun. There's a <laughs> freight train coming down. Oh, no! What does that mean? I'm a little light. afraid. I love the when they were showing the crowd there, the, the Lions, you know, players there, because there were a couple that looked like they were ready to run through a mm. wall. Their eyes were so big. But there was another couple because you know, this is the you know humanity. Just the saying, of humanity, yeah, off, that kind of look looked like I feel like I would have looked in that scenario. It was like confused. That was like, wait a second. Does that mean we're all gonna die? <laughs> like, what is that? What does this analogy mean? I uh, yeah, <laughs> I hear your point on that. Like some were totally locked in, and some were kind of like, it's "What is very, this guy like, talking about?" I'm not a uh, scholar in the Metallica realm, but that's a lot of James Hetfield's lyrics. Or it's not the most optimistic way to look at things, and that's real. I, yeah, it's fair. I'm wondering what he was actually trying to say there. I've been like real hot and cold on Hard Knocks, depending on right. the team, the personality of the team. This is the one, um, based off the first episode, that appeals to me more than any other of its previous iterations, and it mm. has to do. For me, with um, I think the characters in this on this team are fueled by language. Dan Campbell, like he feels to me like um, a, a beat poet on the mind-altering drugs that we discuss, who completely loses his way verbally, but then comes back and finds his yeah. way, mm -hmm. and the crowd responds, and it's like you're rooting for him. And I love the way he speaks. And Jamal Williams. Um, I just feel his heart beating out of his chest the oh way he speaks goodness. to the team. And they just seem unified and fun and real to me. And I know that we were on that Detroit Lions thing a couple summers ago, and that train went right off the tracks. I'm kind of back on. I don't really care what the result is, win-loss-wise. This is kind of why I became a football fan way back when. Mm. when you, you didn't know as much about the personalities mm. back then, but they were dynamic you people. You are a free agent in the NFL fan. That's a stretch. I'm just saying I'm enjoying watching them. I'm enjoying the experience. What's the stretch? To pick up the Lions oh, is my I next okay. You're a free think. agent. I, or you're still are you a restricted that? free agent? Are you unrestricted? Are you, just not gonna, are you on the reserve I'm like a plan list? B free agent from like 1989. <laughs> Who's been trying to court you the hardest? No one. Yeah, we, <laughs> weirdly this hasn't come up. It's, like not, he, it's uh, literally, yeah. literally nobody. He's no. divorced from the Browns, but sort of no one totally believes take it. So a, we haven't even take, thought about the idea of you a, rooting for another team. Take up the Chargers. They would let you like yeah. walk the, high on the list. whatever you want there. They'd probably give you a jersey with your name on it. So we'd it. live here. That's a good sell. You have jersey young, with your name on it. Yeah, Justin is... I don't want a jersey with another man's name on it. So I would ask if it could be me. Yeah, I understand. And I'd pick another one. Like, instantly <laughs> vote to the top 10 Chargers super fans. Justin? Like, it would not <laughs> take, I'm not trying to diss the Chargers. No, we know the score, but like. They're they looking for that type of. Brace you. They're looking for that, right? Uh, Mark, you got to come on the uh, Benched with Benetta podcast and pick a, a favorite team with Rachel. I think oh, that. Because she's... she's also going through this right now. So mm. The same team? Not the same team, but you guys can just like discuss these. I this would happily have that void. discussion. Let's try that like next week or something. Okay. That'd be fun. I think this hard knocks has the thing you alluded to that makes the good hard knocks good, which is the charismatic coaches, not just Campbell, 
Aaron Glenn. Mm-hmm. Deuce. Deuce. I mean, this coaching staff is <laughs> just Staley. Deuce Staley, just overflowing with charisma. You think back to what I think is the best hard knocks: the Jets, Rex Ryan hard knocks, where uh, Darrell Rivas held out. Rex Ryan carried Rex Ryan carried that hard knocks. The Browns won for a few years ago with um that one. Hugh Jackson. No, the oh the, co- the, the coach, offensive line coach yeah, who like yeah. captured oh, America's sweetheart. Yeah. Sort of a pear shaped Tony individual. Wiley, was it? Yeah. Yes, who would jiggle his that? stomach comically. Um, also, Greg Williams was there, so it was like you had a super Greg villain Williams, on the staff yeah, too. Yeah, right, saying wild <laughs> stuff. I think, and then I, I will just say I was, I got a little chills when Aiden Hutchinson was got the whole team singing. Mm. I, I, that, that, you know, nice I, I mean, I felt myself being manipulated emotionally. I'm like, oh, don't, don't say this means Aiden Hutchinson is a leader. But then I, I, I looked at my arm. The goosebumps were there. Just saying, he might have that it factor. That's what this team does. Um, yes. By the way, your pod I listened to this morning. Like, every, everyone should. No, it was excellent. Well, you and Colleen have great chemistry, but it was a thorough, thorough recap, and uh, I thought you did an A-plus job. We had a lot of fun. We're using a vector voting system for choosing the MVP based on how um, MLB chooses their MVP. As you know, Greg, the AP NFL MVP, it's just 50 guys get one vote each. Right. And, win. <laughs> and that is lame. But vector voting assigns like a weighted scoring system. So we're doing a first, second, and third place vote for each episode. And then Graver will be tabulating. And then we'll have a Hard Knocks MVP mm. that just locked and loaded. I'm so excited about naming the MVP. I did notice that during the course of the first episode, Grave Digger w- w- received about 25 additional jobs to actually producing the show, <laughs> including getting you Detroit pizza. Um, but a lot of math, because like you, Colleen and Dan are not into the math no. th- side of things. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, he's already got us some merch, so we're already off to a great start. All right, that's enough. And by the way, lots of uh, NFL UK around the NFL fans asking when can they see Hard Knocks. Uh, it's on NFL Game Pass on Fridays. So there you go. So if you want to set aside the Hard Knocks podcast until you could watch it, totally makes sense to me. It's an evergreen product. There you go. All right, let's get to it. Let's see. I got on my notes here. I had the plug there, the UK note. Break. I had Mina fame. I checked in on that. (laughs) And now let's get to over-unders on the 2022 season. Um, Greg, do you want to, like, set the table on this one? Because I know this is near and dear to your heart. The ayahuasca uh, for Greg's heart is over-unders and gambling in general. Well, that's not true. We're not allowed to under league policy, but we are going to take a look. I believe our our, uh, trusty friend Sean Kelly printed out some over-unders from DraftKings, and we're just going to pick in a draft style. And, Justin, I don't know if you have ran do a way to, like, randomize the draft order for us on air. Oh, Digger's got that under control. We we haven't really spoken about this. Um, But the idea would be that we all draft, not in a snake draft, just like an NFL draft. You know, same order the whole time. And we take the over-unders that we feel the most strong about. So, and we'll keep track of this. So, if if for some reason you think, let's say – I'm trying to think of one that no one's going to take. But, like, the, the, the Bills over 11 and a half is, like, your number one pick of the year. And that would be your first draft pick. And we'll we'll track this during the season. So draft order is very important here, um, hmm. I would think. Uh, if, if you we have all, something if we that all you're agree, If we all agree. Let's certainly. try to do, like, at least three each and see where we are time-wise. Mina yeah. has 400 shows she has to do after this. So we well, want to well, What do we win? What, what does the winner win materialistically? Uh, uh, you just – the respect of your peers and the audience. Well, why does everything have to have a I money know. I mean, value? I feel like Mark. hopefully I already have those things, but <laughs> maybe not. Sandwich. I mean, what if Stu Gatz is listening? Yeah, oh, that's true. Can I come back if I win? Yeah, there yes, it is. You that's, can come back. With we'll especially if you, if you maybe if you were to lose, we would definitely want maybe you to come Nick back Fortier, and who does keep track of uh, Go Get My Lunch, which is our yeah. our, our annual Go preseason um, predictions, could add this to uh, Go Get My Lunch dot org. And yes, a new tab. We're just giving everyone work to do, <laughs> not doing a damn thing ourselves. Right. Yeah, you you do get a, a free Summer's lunch here over. at the NFL Huddle. Ah, Mina, free lunch at the HUD, mm. as we all do. <laughs> I thought I was going to get that anyway. Yeah, but yeah, we know. already pitched you that. You can come back again. Included, you can come but... back anytime. You're in the Inglewood area. I was at a, uh, a long time ago when I worked at MLB.com. There was a Christmas party with an open bar. And uh, former Yankees catcher Jim Laritz worked at the time uh, with the uh, company. And I was at the bar and Jim, Jimmy Laritz was next to me. And there were some like attractive women to his right. And he literally turned to them and said, hey, can I buy you a drink? 
And and the girl was like, "It's an open bar." And then she just walked away. <laughs> Still hit that hang slider from Mark Wallers though, ninety six. All right, let's get into it. Uh, Graver, do you want to do the automized draft? I'm sure there's a website or something you're working off here. Yeah, or let's something else uh, more crude. Let's generate a, a random list here. Here we go. I suppose we could have just been nice and let our guests. Ooh, nice. uh, pick I first, would. I but, think yeah. I thought about that. Well, but maybe it's after too Mina it's randomize fine. it. No, yeah. no, it's we're fine. in too deep. I don't need to go first. We would have missed right. that sound effect. We have a list. Okay. Greg, Mina, Mark, Dan. Son of a. <laughs> and it does. I don't get a snake either. No. No, You're, I don't. Th- you know that's what? That's not fair. You, I, you said no. I, it's state. like that an NFL draft. Said it. No, I said that. I don't think it matters unless we all are agreeing. And if we it doesn't all matter. Do you want to trade draft picks? If it means that much to no. you as the host, no, you can nice have it. try. You, you can <laughs> have I'm it. the bigger man. No, I don't. There right. was no I'll way we it. were getting out of that exercise <laughs> without controversy. Okay. Um, <laughs> first, uh, if I'm first, then uh, this is one I do think uh, other people would have taken at some point. I'm going Bears under six and a half as the very first pick. Off the board, uh, right. six and a half. That's more than a, a handful of teams out there. The Seahawks are at five and a half. Jets at five and a half. Falcons at five. Uh, Texans at four and a half. I, it's one of my truisms that it's really not that hard to win six or seven games in the NFL. You can kind of stumble into it, and the Bears have a pretty – Hell, the Falcons won seven last right, year. Right, soft schedule mm-hmm. out of the division, and, and that's part of the reason there. Some of their underlying analytics are okay. I don't care. Their, their starting left tackle is Braxton Jones. We we talked a lot about their wide receiver group that a, a few days ago that they're running out Nasimba Webster, Chris Finke, and Isaiah Coulter. But that's not going to be the group in the season. I believe in Justin Fields. I believe a good outcome for this team would be five wins. Uh, I just look at Matt Eberflus, Flus as, Eberflus? as, as Colleen uh, let us know uh, he's called. And I... I don't see like a great track record of dominating success. I always look for that in my head coaches. Like, are you bringing something tangible to the table? Like tangible schematic success. And I don't know if I have that in Matt Eberflus. He's been like a totally good defensive coordinator, but not one that like stuck out to me as one of the five best in the league. And then you look at the, the roster and beyond the defensive line with Quinn, who may or may not be on the team, or beyond Quinn on the defensive line, it gets really thin, really fast. They're excited about the secondary, but they're excited about second-round rookie picks like Jaquan Brisker and Kyler Gordon being a huge part of that secondary. I just look up and down, and there isn't one part of this team that you can feel confident is better than average. And so to me, I think they have a better chance of – being in the mix for the number one overall pick than they do of going over six and a half. Mm-hmm. You'll notice on this list, no one is below four and a half. And they're almost always, you know, there's a one, two, three, four lost teams. But so they're here. There's some real b- teams that are going to drop bombs this season. And I think the Bears are a safe bet. How about you, mm. Mina, number two overall pick? That was so negative that I feel like I have to do an over now. Well, like it, okay. I'm gonna yeah. go. I'm gonna go with the Saints at eight. Oh, I love it. Um, I figured Greg or uh, Sessler, well, Sessie would. I, I find what they did to the Saints insulting. And you're going Saints over over eight. over eight. Over yeah, eight. Yeah, to be clear, yeah. Um, yeah. here's the thing: you get to play the Bucks or pardon me, the Falcons and the Panthers uh, a couple times there. Uh, this defense is still, I think, one of the five best defenses in the NFL is getting a little bit older. You are counting on some younger contributors, but the core is still in place. And then offensively, you know, for my own podcast, we do these division previews. And I took some time to rewatch Jameis Winston's starts from last year. I was higher on him after rewatching them. Mm. Uh, You know, at the time I thought, eh, it's pretty conservative. You look at some of the deep, passing metrics they're not that great I was looking at the end of the season before I went back and watched but when I went back and watched I thought he looked extremely sound fundamentally I thought the wide receivers were much worse than I remembered there were some pretty significant drops and now you're bringing in Michael Thomas returning I think people have forgotten how good he is Dude. Chris Olave who's apparently lighting up training camp um the offensive line is obviously a bit of a concern with um 
perpetual fight starter Trevor Penning on the left side. Don't love that. <laughs> but right. otherwise, I think um, the like skill players in a row, he's been in fist fights. are so good. It seems like Alvin Kamara's suspension might be delayed as well. Yeah, his court uh, date was moved back a month. So at the, at the very least, he's safe for the yeah, beginning the, of the season. So that doesn't really that. affect the over-under or whatever. But um, I, I think this offense, you know, obviously the loss of Sean Payton is enormous. And we'll see what Pete Carm- who Pete Car- Car- Carmichael is, I guess. Um, but did okay I, in that in that Sean Payton uh, season. He was suspended. We should also, did out. not want the did great. He actually, seemed to yeah. shy away from more responsibility this off season until they kind of made him stay as the play caller. We're gonna see a lot of him on the sidelines. A lot of sh- shots of him watching Jameis Winston. Um, uh, this offense was disgusting last year without Winston. I don't know. I just think the combination of an elite defense. I do believe they're elite. With a improved offense, that's that's better than eight. It should be. I was trying to figure this one out. It's a little confusing, and I think it was the out of division schedule for that division is challenging. Yeah. Uh, that they play the AFC West and they play the NFC West because because uh, the, the the out of division schedules determine a lot of these numbers. But even then, they they were on my list of teams I wanted to throw out there as I over hate eight. having to say this over and over again, but. Sean Payton's not there, and Jameis Winston's the quarterback. There's reason to doubt is not unfair around this team. Also. No, but they won nine last year, and they won 12 the year before. I, I know it. that was with Drew Brees, but that was like an older Drew Brees. And, and most – they have pretty good continuity. I mean, that's the thing. They've, they've kicked the can down the road financially, and they have good continuity. There's something about the Saints, just the way they're built, the way they operate. I mean, you mentioned the rest of the NFC South. They swept the Bucks last year, too. Right. They don't that, seem to have fear what's going on in Tampa Bay. And I you know, Tampa Bay I'm getting weird vibes from right now. So I just say mm-hmm. I look at eight wins and I'm saying like that's disrespectful. So we're, all, we're all kind of in on that. Mm. Feeling good? You like, want, we like me to offer one. We don't get credit. I thought you were next, though, no? No, yeah. I am. Um this may this may I people may not like this, but I am banging the Houston Texans <sighs> for a that. four point five over. Okay. I mean, I, I just I had them on first my, of all they're on, they're list. on my list, and it's I don't need to dig deep into the roster because it's like I don't think it's a talented team necessarily, but I don't I think Davis Mills, um, they stuck with him for a reason. I like that. I think guys like Nico Collins is going to make a big step up at wide receiver. They were absolutely bereft of talent last year, and it's not that they have so much more, but if you look at what they did down the stretch, they were they were a ghastly show for like the early part of the season. Then down the stretch. They beat the Titans. They came within a three points of beating them again. They almost swept the Titans. They scored 41 points on them to beat the Chargers and knocked off the Jaguars. I'm just saying they improved. And I, I think that Lovey Smith is going to bring a steadying influence there. They won four games a year ago. This thing is saying they're only going to win 4.5. I'm going over. And I'm, I'm very confident about it. I like that. I feel like they're a team that's kind of sold out to win seven games and they totally could by just like adding a bunch of middle tier NFL players that can play football like a Malik Collins or they they add like Mario Addison and Jerry Hughes they just like imported the Bills old pass rush they're kind of not a young team I remember that really yeah. caught my eye on football outsiders like they have who are the oldest teams and youngest they're one of the older teams in the league so they actually have some promising rookies we'll see if that works out Damian Pierce we mentioned the other day sounds good uh, at, at running back they might have some fun young players but they like feel like they'll they are the the like it's not that hard to win six games in the NFL uh, team for me this year. The uh, great hype around Nico Collins. Love this quote from Davis Mills. I don't think there's many people out there who can stop him. He's ha- apparently had an awesome offseason. Hello. Ooh. Hello. Ooh. All right. My turn. It's a little aggressive. Maybe. It is, it but, you know, if, if we're drinking the Kool Aid, there's some more. How about Texans as your first pick? That was, that was pretty bold. I wanted them, actually. They have the 29th hardest schedule in football. Hmm. Hardest thing. schedule? Oh, no, uh, 29th. So. Oh, okay. Oh, so right, right, right. That's good. Oh, yeah, no. I was suddenly okay. concerned okay. With, my, yeah. with my pick. Okay, yeah. 29th. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, we're, we're bad at This math. is something we kind of hit on a little bit a couple days ago. I'm going to hit on it again. I'm banging the over on the Patriots at 8.5. Wow. Mm. I know there's a lot of doom and gloom around the Patriots these days because they're oh, wow. installing a new offense and this general idea that Matt Patricia is, um, I'm going to bring it back, a nincompoop. And, you know, he, he's going to botch this thing and Joe Judge is involved. And I think a lot of people are having fun with all this. And again, missing the central part of all this is that Bill's still here. 
Bill Belichick is at the center of everything. And Mac Jones. Oh, by the way, this team, they won nine or ten games last year. Right? They won ten games. They won ten games last year with a rookie quarterback. Mac Jones dedicated his offseason to get into even better shape. And he, I think, is going to make a leap. I know you're going to say Josh McDaniels isn't there. And that's fair. But there's also a scenario where mentally he starts to get even more ramped up and the physical side he improves and becomes like a legitimate quarterback with Bill Belichick. Stop me if you heard this before. And they, I think, are in the wild card race. I think nine, ten wins makes a lot of sense to me. So I'm banging the over because, come on, how many times have we counted out the Patriots before? I, I just now, have one. Now, facial just, expressions I, no, I during one, that one was question. Yes. Is Jalen Mills the best outside cornerback on this roster? Okay. Not only right. that, but our, our old colleague, a man by the name of Evan <laughs> Le- Lazar, uh, who now writes oh, for Patriots.com. He is very really good. good he did like a person-by-person person, like recap of training no camp. I said. And he said, Jalen Mills is without a doubt the number one cornerback in this league. And, they, and I've seen that in multiple Ooh. places. And number two right now is a man named Terrence Mitchell, who, who the Texans did not bring back. So, yeah, is it going to be a work in progress? <laughs> yes. On offense, absolutely. On defense, perhaps. But many a people have busted out in this realm, this world of Vegas. <laughs> Thinking Bill Belichick can't. Now get I, know. I like that you're like you're that you've been you pounding this point home about the Patriots. But you're always for weeks. high on the Patriots. It's a, some weird reverse uh, Jets you're, thing. You're, you're going for it. I like that. I, I, I'm trying yeah, I mean, to think of results. like I'm trying to think of a quarterback that two months ago I felt as promising as I could about Mac Jones compared to the reporting around what's going on with that offense right now. It's like just distressing. So they maybe it all work goes away. Do. But it is August. I mean, the, it's going to take time. But I think by the time he gets October, please don't be surprised when they've they get to a softer portion of their schedule and all of a sudden they've won six of seven. Oh, I like, think, I think it play, happens. I think player for player, you could look at this offensive roster and say, this is the most talented offensive roster. What about you're making the, the lead Patriots conversation have had in about five years, which is like not sneaky, not that high a bar. I know they won a Super Bowl in that mix, but Greg, just who are some been... of the making the leap guys that you were wrestling with? Cause you had to pick one and they surprisingly have several guys to you that could make sure that leap. Bar Barmore is exciting. Mac Jones is certainly exciting. Your boy, Josh Uche, maybe will finally step up. Mina. I saw a Patriots reporter tweet something about, um, Kendrick Bourne being used like Debo Samuel. Mm. It's intriguing. I mean, they're just trying to install this off. Uh, to your point, though, uh, as a as a longtime uh, fan, obviously, they always do their best in the seasons where uh, there's the most negativity around them uh, going into it. It's almost like clockwork. Well, they should win the and Super they, Bowl. And when they have a lot time. of hype, they generally don't do it. So well. this really, this draft doesn't snake. So I'm going to pick last in the second round as well. Is that for something we're going to track standards? Can I wise? ask you a question? Yeah. <laughs> let's say that the order came out where right. you were second. No one well, was no. taking the exact same like, pick. Let's say I came in fourth. Right. Would you be like uh, the justice warrior that you are no, around this snake I'm, trap No, because I'm business? not a beta. I speak up for myself when I feel like oh, I'm being taken advantage of. a lot advantage of like beta talk. Wait, I'm today. just asking like, if you would be <laughs> concerned <laughs> for other people if it were not just you in this situation. I, I'll, I'll give you my pick. you got to look out for the number one. If you want to switch spots, you can have Don't you No, don't. See, don't good soldier me don't i'm the bigger man me i'm just saying maybe it should snake to the zeuser but apparently it's pushed back here greg you're up i was that fine. Is an i was fine with, an, what I you were doing just gave it to right you. now but yeah, listen i've said my piece i'm gonna go and i hate uh <laughs> mm, actually you know i want to take this because i do think mark might uh i'm gonna go eagles over nine and a half because mm. i don't want to go just like hard negative uh twice in a row uh you got in his head, Mina. I like that. Spooked, yeah, that, I was not going there, but okay. like, nice job. I just know we're kind of both on the Eagles. A lot of people are on the Eagles. I think they might have started with a lower number, and it's now been up to nine and a half, which concerns me a little bit because you never want to be too uh, too far with the public. The Travis Kelsey injury this week actually reminded me of why I love the Eagles so much. Obviously, you don't want Travis Kelsey to go undergo surgery. Uh, but you do have a second round pick everyone loved and Cam Jurgens like right there to step mm. up. And that to me is the story of the Eagles roster. It's like they kind of found a number one receiver finally in Devonta Smith. And oh, let's go add another. We have a, a promising uh, second year defensive tackle who most teams would love to like really like pump up in Milton Williams. Oh, let's go get Jordan Davis. We still have Fletcher Cox. We let we get Reddick in free agency. We still have Josh Sweat under contract. Oh, by the way, like. Somehow Brandon Graham and Nick Barnett are still there. Uh, they just like have so much. Even Hurts, like if Hurts gets gets injured, hurt. 
you have uh, Gardner Minshew. It's like just so much depth where they can survive, and they're out of division schedule for this entire division, which is it, why all the NFC East over unders are inflated. Is just tasty. You play the AFC South. You play, uh, obviously, your in-division games, and you play the NFC North. I love that out-of-division schedule. I am banging that over okay. of nine and a half. <laughs> All right. Is Cam, is Cam Jurgens the, the center who got walked back by Jordan Davis? In I that mean, viral? No, no, I, who's I just, not going to get walked back? back. No, 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 but on the flip side, Jordan Davis, who's obviously more likely to right. have to contribute immediately, looks freaking amazing. And they say Kelsey is kind of, uh, it sounds like 50-50 maybe for I'm, week one. That's, I'm that, sure it's fine. I love, I like the Eagles. I had them on my list. I've just. But that's the thing, like. You're going to have injuries, and and they certainly yeah. have, especially for whatever reason over the years. Not as bad last year, um, but it just it, like linebacker too, Kaiser White, I, who you I remember you shot me down um, for giving him some pop on your podcast, gosh. Mina. And then I was reading the Football Outsiders. Uh, all why, why do you need to do that, Greg? Well, because it just reminded me what of a score I need to settle. Kaiser White. That one of the most underrated signings of the offseason, yeah. top six in Nailed success it, rate well, and yards well, per pass. Allowed, but it's like him and Nakobe Dean, a nice little combo. Let's Greg check, check back in on that. Let's, over let's, here. Let's, check, let's check back in. <laughs> just reminded me, that. I just like read that. I was like, should I take a picture of this and send it Mina, to Mina? No. Do you now know why you're on no. the show today? Yeah. Greg just wanted to get that point out. He was waiting for the perfect time <laughs> to get his it. revenge. It's like uber Machiavellian. Well, now, <laughs> right. now I want to take the Giants just to reference Daniel Jones making Greg's making the leap list. Uh, okay. Years ago. But, seven no, wins. no, no, I'm not doing it. That's I that would no. be okay. solely if I was just actually, using these picks to, to be settle fair, scores. It's more embarrassing. That was just like a totally separate. <laughs> oh no! Get ready for Drew, Daniel Jones and Drew Lock. That was worse. That was worse. That was worse. That we try to help Greg with that one. He just um, wouldn't listen. <laughs> all right. Gotta take some else. I'm uh, I'm gonna bang, uh, bungle bungle mangle this quote. I'm going one ass cheek and three toes in. Oh, yeah. toes you at have it. taken what I, I am do. taking the Lions. All over, right. Over. To there be clear. you go. Six point five over. Um, Seven or more wins for the Detroit Lions. Three and fourteen okay. a year ago. They get in the like uh, that. The infamous hard knocks bump. You watch that show and you're always higher <laughs> on the team. Is it happening for me and So Kunz? I have to apologize because I um, teased you guys. So the Houston Texans actually have a very hard schedule. So <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Well, I, I still – I, they're still winning yeah, five I, games, I'm using though. the sharp football, which actually aligns pretty well with the Football Outsiders projection. They've got the Lions as the, the fifth easiest All right. schedule. It's always hard. Hardest, easy. You know, yep, right, that's the tough. rankings. Yeah. Um, okay. I think out, outside of Jared Guff, I love everything about this offensive depth chart. I think they have the, one of the best offensive lines in football. They're healthy. Battled some injuries last year. Uh, they've got nice depth there. I think the wide receiver group, whenever Jameson Williams comes back, is such a fun. It's like a such a complimentary group. With you've got, you know, Chark as the the, the X big body pass catcher. You've got Williams stretching the field as the Z. You've got Eamon Ross St. Brown working underneath, you know. Um, and even without um, Williams, by the way, I thought Goff flashed some really nice chemistry with Josh Reynolds, who knows from the Rams days. They figured out about partway during the season that um, they wanted a different, they wanted, they, Campbell took over play calling, but um, this season, uh, Ben Tom Thomas is the name Thompson or Thomas, the tight ends coach. Ben Johnson. Johnson. Yeah. Johnson. Anyway, so he's gonna play call the plays, and I think that worked out pretty well for them towards the end of the season. I don't love the defense. I think there's still a lot of holes, particularly in the secondary. But I think this front has the potential, particularly defensive line with the aforementioned charisma king Aiden Hutchinson. Mm. Um, now suddenly you've got, got actual edge rush depth. Charles Harris has another good year. You've got the Oquaras, um, the kid from Kentucky, Josh Pascal. So I don't know. I, I, I like Lim McNeil on the inside. I just think – I don't think they're going to be a playoff team. I just think they're going to win some games. L look at the schedule for the Lions down at near the end of the season. Let's say they're a little bit under where, where you want them to be. They have the Jaguars, the Jets, the Panthers, the Bears. They have the Bears twice. Mm. They're, they're better than these teams. That's as, probably as easy a stretch as any – any team has all year. And and if you're ever going to construct a team that Jared Goff could succeed on, obviously you'd like a f you know, few more established weapons that he's played with, this might be the best offensive line in football. And when I saw that, like I was reading all the 
Beat writer reports and like the defense is destroying the offense everywhere except for Detroit, where like Jared Goff is like lighting them up and hasn't been touched. And I'm like, okay, that's the offensive line. Maybe it worries you a little bit about their defense, but that's well, what do we know okay. about Jared Goff. If he's comfortable, he's not bad. If he's not comfortable, he is very bad. I like but, that he wasn't even on hard knocks. They like literally barely even. They don't his need him face. to be. No, <laughs> they don't he's, need, he's also so been many. on hard knocks like forty-seven this times. This is the at this fourth point, time so. he's on a major NFL Films documentary program, <laughs> and that's a wild thing considering what he brings to the proceedings. Anyway, um, DJ Chark, I know we mentioned that as well. They've been flashing uh, throughout training camp the chemistry between mm. Goff and DJ. Uh, all right, who is up? Mark, you're up. I am. Uh, well, first of all. I was so excited about picking the Lions, so I'm not. Mm. I don't love that what just hurts. happened there. I knew somebody would take the Lions. Could have taken them first. It was Mina Kimes. I think for all the reasons that Mina pointed, it's just a great pick. I'm going Washington Commanders under eight wins. I find this absurd. I don't think this is a terrible absurd. football team, but <laughs> I, I, for me, I think that the Carson Wentz experiment is already um, off to a weird start. I don't love. As we all know, decided to really go ahead and uh, start to take command. Can, can well, I just we'll say see when you, they start to? You command. call it you call it absurd, but you also say they're not that bad. Eight wins. That feels like that's a land that they can well, live I would, in. I would, it would say make that sense. some of the um, the choices are are diminishing here in terms of what I'm what no, I tell me about it. I, I know. Old what are you talking about? Zeus, You've got like literally almost any option. I, I just had like seven or eight that I was like <laughs> yeah, rock so solid. You could on, just so. disagree. We could have a, a like a lock off type of. I didn't even look too. at it that way. That's interesting. Yeah, we could do that. Uh, oh no, I don't feel. You confident. stole my pick. Yeah. I actually, I was that was that was what I had slated as my second pick, and then Amina got in my head about being too negative. I think Commanders <laughs> under eight's beautiful. I'm with you. Like yeah, it's a, it just stands out to me. It's like I could totally see them having a five win season that is Couldn't very they have the number one overall induced. pick. I mean, sure. their defense was worse than their offense last year by a decent amount, and I know they had injuries, and they. They have the personnel up front to certainly bounce back and be average-ish on defense, but there's not much reason to think that either that the offense would be close to average. And everybody hates Carson Wentz, so I get it. Um, and he certainly is not someone that's exciting to watch. But, you know, he had uh, stretches last year where he was perfectly acceptable, I thought, as a starting quarterback before things collapsed. I, I just think in that division – and we got to take a break because I think this will tie together. Let's take a break real quick and then finish things up with Mina Kimes. All right, welcome back. Washington Commanders, we're just talking about it, Mark. I'm going to take the under on the Dallas Cowboys. I love it. Mm. Wow. Um, I love it. Because I think these teams are all pretty close together, especially I'd, I wasn't confident enough to hit the over on the Giants, but I think the Giants will be better this season. I think – I could see the Cowboys coming down, the Eagles coming up, and the Washington just kind of hanging around in the middle. And I could see this being one of those divisions where, you know, 10 wins, nine could even win. And I just think the Cowboys, with their wide receiver concerns, with that offensive line, I want to see if Dak is going to be all the way back to Dak and the guy that he was before the injury. The Mike McCarthy drama, I know they're trying to downplay it, but – you know, what if they get off to a slow start? And I'm looking at their schedule. If they can get to the bye in week nine in good shape, I'll be in trouble on this uh, because they got Tampa, Cincinnati on the road at home to start the season, at Giants, home Washington, at Rams, at Philly, home Detroit, home Chicago. If they can get out of those eight games at like five and three, things soften up and yeah, they can get uh, to 10 and maybe even 11. But I see them coming out of the gate a little bit slow and. I see this team eight or nine wins. Hmm. Um, Who's winning this division that. in your mind, the Eagles? I I mean, in the power rankings, I have the Cowboys and Eagles right next to each other. So I had the Cowboys ahead, but at the same time, it would not surprise me if somebody else sneaks up and takes this. I worry about the teams where defense leads the way, and, I, and weirdly, that's the Cowboys this year. But uh, yeah, on paper, the defense has a real chance to be a top five defense. You know, number one, they were top five a year ago. Mm. And in Demarcus Lawrence, you get a full season out of him. The secondary doesn't look amazing on paper, but there is crazy continuity and youth on the defense, which is not a bad combination. Yeah. Very few teams have that. Uh, I love the Anthony Barr signing, if only because like it indicates that they want to use Michael Parsons more as a pass rusher. I, I think that's sort of what that's about. Like it, it's a really nice defense on paper. Plus Dak Prescott is feels like ten to me feels like the right number and with the easy schedule I'd probably go over if I had to choose but but I I don't feel strong. 
I'm with you on the under. I and I I got wavered between the Eagles and the Cowboys. Who's going to win the division? It's roster versus quarterback, right? But a couple things about the Cowboys that are concerning. Obviously, the wide receiver depth is just a massive issue with this team. It's been gotten more and more massive. Um, I I don't know if I'm hopping off the Kellen Moore bandwagon, but I feel like he hasn't mm. shown that sort of ability to make adjustment. I I, I worry. I look at this roster and I th- and I wonder okay what is this offense going to look like now as they've lost talent and then on the other side of the football the, the defense ha- was really good last year but if you kind of dig through the numbers they are a prime regression candidate so dependent on turnovers um gave up big plays but made big plays they do have the potential to have one of the best pass rushes in the league and I'm very excited to see how Micah Parsons is used this year but behind them I don't know it just I don't think they're going. I still think they're going to be good. I just don't think they're going to be one of the five best defenses in the NFL again. Can't you see this season going sideways for them too? It's Doesn't like every, one of those it's like years. every other season seems yeah. to go sideways for the Cowboys? But if you look at their schedule, I think you're going to be right up against it. The, it's they, going to be totally close. close. I yeah. don't think they're going to crater, but I also I don't think this is a 12 and five team either. I, I think I think nine wins is going to be it. Uh, all right, you want to do one more real quick, kind of like a speed round, and then wrap things up? Okay. Um, I'm glad uh, I'm I'm annoyed you took the Commanders, but I did have like four picks I really liked a lot, and so my last one uh, is Chiefs over ten and a half. Ooh. I mean, this isn't that complicated. They uh, with Patrick Mahomes, here's their win totals: 12, 12, 14, and twelve. And that's also a Tyree kill, by the way. It absolutely is, and I and I obviously that's the big negative here. Uh, but I think they have some positives that they didn't have in some of those years. Number one is. I have a feeling the pass rush might be significantly better than this year. I'm sort of buying the Frank Clark rejuvenation hype after giving them absolutely nothing. Uh, Karloftis and then Dunlop as like your third guy like that. That's better. And then it's the best offensive line I think they've had uh, in that time. And I'm just not overthinking it too much. I, I think that over 10 and a half is an, in, is an easy one. All right. Mina, give us one. I had two one overs, more. so I'm going to go an under. <sighs> I feel bad because I feel like people think I have a beef with this team, and I don't. <laughs> I have a beef with their social account. Is it the Titans? It's the Arizona Cardinals. Oh, the Cardinals. Mm. You took mine again. Um, okay, so basically they're at eight and a half. So it's it's are they going to have a you know a winning season or a losing season is kind of what's on the line here. Um, I think they're the third best team in the division, pretty clearly. The Hopkins in- suspension is absolutely brutal for them. Mm. We've seen what Cliff Kingsbury has done uh, without DeAndre Hopkins. It has not been great. Uh, and then defensively, oh my God, have you guys looked at this defensive depth chart lately? Up front, exactly. it's not great, man. I mean, maybe they're going to figure. I, I've been reading the reports about them using Isaiah Simmons more as a safety, you know, and, and just giving him that assigned role. Maybe that gets him on the field more. Maybe, I mean, Marcus Gold Golden is the best edge rusher they have right now uh jj watt i thought was actually pretty good when healthy but god this is it is and look vance joseph has been excellent at putting something together out of it's asking a lot of vance it's a it's a lot yeah i just don't i just don't think they have the depth on that side of the ball i feel like we agree we all agree too much if you had it next it was on my you know medium list for sure yeah uh, Mark, your last one. I hope you pick one of the two that I'm wrestling with, so it makes it easier for me. Let's see what happens. I am going Los Angeles Chargers. Mm. Uh, ten wins. I'm taking the over. I mean, it starts with Justin Herbert. It starts with everything that's around Justin Herbert. I love Uh-oh. the idea that Zion Johnson has been dominant at right guard, their rookie, their first-round pick. I look at the defense and what they've added. It's it's not just Khalil Mack. It's J.C. Jackson, mm. and you've got Derwin James. And I truly think that Brandon Staley came out of last season um, extremely agitated with how the defense just sort of crumbled. And I think they've got a, they've got a plan. I love this coach. I love the quarterback. I think they're going to flat out win the division. Mm. I mean, 11, the Chargers who eternally let us down. I mean, not did, impossible. Didn't, with he, have 17 a, didn't game he have a season. plan last year? I I think they. I, don't, I think I that think they. You're higher on I, I think than that me. what they found, what what they added on defense, allows Brandon Staley to it, ex- basically fulfill his vision. If it doesn't happen this year, I'd have big questions about him. But I don't understand why anyone's down on Brandon Staley. People are going to put out projections with like three AFC West teams all winning in a, a mathematically impossible number right. of games. Right. It's one of the one or two of these teams is going to have to be a big letdown. But to me, that's the fact that they're only separated by half a game. With uh, the the Chiefs are only half a game different than the Broncos and the Chargers. Like that that seems like value to me. Whereas the the Chiefs, I'm taking them more uh, and more than a half a game better than those. And to be clear, teams. I'm not down on Staley. 
I just don't know if I, I see him as a difference maker yet. I don't I don't know if there's enough evidence for that. Post that on social and you're going to get the Chargers jersey with, with you're right. no it's name. Well, you know, I've, the, the machine is starting to work. <laughs> there, is, there is another option. Um, we could save this. Uh, but Yeah, let's save. Because okay. <laughs> your, your fandom is something very interesting, but also a sensitive subject on this podcast. But let's it will come up naturally later. We got to we got to get out of here. Okay. But I got something. All right. Well, I'm I excited for the future. Uh, the last one for me, and I was stunned that it was still out there, um, but I'm not going to do Ravens over. I think they're going to win that division. And I think nine and a half is something you can live with. Mm-hmm. But uh, I can see them as 10 or 11. But I'm going to go with the Bills. They're number one in my power rankings. Eleven and a half is a huge number, but I just I'm I'm just gonna buy in and say everything that they've done, everything they've been building to, is a truly huge season coming up. And barring a uh, major injury or injuries or some other issues, I know Brian Dayball's not there, and you could st- choose to dig in there if you want on the offensive side of the ball. I'm gonna go with that. It, it does come together. They are by far the best team in that division. So they're going to beat up on the AFC East, take care of business elsewhere, and they're going to win. They'll go 12 and 5, 13 and 4. Um, and let's somebody's got to have the monster record. Why not them, Mina Kimes? I like it as a Patriots hedge. Mm. Ooh, that's yeah, nice. you yeah. did go over a 40 Truth. chess. There. They only had 10 last yeah. year, which you sort of forget. <laughs> not 40 chess. They only won 10 games last year. <laughs> they did uh, sit their starters in week 18, so that was part of that 10 win. So right. they had some bumpy, had hiccups. Yeah. But on paper, yeah, you're right. I think the uh, this is one of those the off seasons too long that. Uh, at least I felt like, exactly. of course, I was like, yeah. this This is the best team in the NFL. You felt that in May, and now it's just like feels too boring to go with There's it. There's going to be it, it a juggernaut sense. or two, and I'm I'm picking the Bills confidently as one of those. That's why. I know what was next on my list was Seahawks over five and a half. Didn't get that in there, but I on, did. Yeah. that seemed crazy to me. I Maybe I should have gone with that, but that, man, Pete Carroll's not <laughs> losing. Pete Carroll's not losing 12 games. I think the CX defense is going to be better than people expect. The That's offense. I, yeah, let's ask me about that. What is your feeling about the way they're handling the entire quarterback situation, even going back to the decision to move Russ and to where <laughs> we much, are right now? How much time now. we have left? Yeah, it's up just, to you. <laughs> yeah. Sensitive subject. Um, we'll, give you, we'll give you the floor, a little okay. monologue here. Uh, the optimistic interpretation that I find myself sometimes leaning towards is that the organization is actually pretty self-aware about where they are they're going for the old, the halfway rebuild, the old we're going to retool on the fly, take this year off with the quarterback, get a quarterback next year, get some cap space cleared, use our picks to improve at premium positions like offensive line, edge rusher corner. So I like all of that. Um, they seem at least more self-aware than certainly some other teams, I think, that actually did go all in on mm. getting some mediocre quarterbacks. Um, that said, it's, it's not going to be fun to watch this year. And this is always yeah. the question, right? Which is like, do we right. want our teams to be smart or fun? Um, I'm, I, I, f- I think the defense will be interesting. I like the coaching changes that they've made, brought in a lot of really smart guys on that side of the football. Carl Scott, Sean Desai, Clint Hurts elevated uh, as defensive coordinator. So I'm curious to see how that looks. But you know, if they don't get a good quarterback next year, it'll all be for naught. That's the X factor. Would you have wanted, for the fun angle, I'm not saying this is uh, would have completely solved your problems, would you have wanted Baker Mayfield? I mean, I know there was a, it was a candidate. Um, well, so that would have been, you know, I think they would have been like the Panthers, frankly. It's like, okay, well, this is a team that's... If the CX had Baker Mayfield, I think we would be talking about them as a fringe wild card candidate, uh, wild card team. And... You know, it, this it got it goes back to the smart versus fun. Like, do I want to have more fun watching this team this season, or do I want them to do what is probably the right thing to do for the long term? Um, I, I, I increasingly maybe it's just me get, having fewer years on this earth. I lean more towards let's be fun, and you never know what's going to happen with draft picks and whatnot. Because being um, doing the smart thing is nice, and it's also a nice way for the for yeah. people to argue for the Seahawks and what they're doing right now. But you just said it like that. There's no guarantee. Well, that they get the quarterback, and teams have spent 20 years looking for that person. And even if you win, like, two or three more games with Baker Mayfield, you can still put something together, go crazy next year. We see teams do that time and time again. Tanking is pretty stupid in the NFL, frankly. Uh, I do. I, I wish they had taken a flyer on one of the rookies just because there was so much value there, like a Malik Willis or a Desmond Ritter or whatever, just to have some, you know, a developmental prospect. I think teams should generally do that, and I don't know why they don't do it more often. You know, maybe it won't be fun for you. But if we're in week 12 <laughs> or 11 and they're five and five and 
Gino oh, is God. directing like go. a run heavy, like ugly Can I get sort a cab? of like 19 to you know they're winning games 19 to 17 and or maybe they're six and five let's give them a winning record like Pete Carroll is gonna be having fun I'm gonna be having fun watching this <laughs> I think Pete Carroll's like dream in the world is to go nine and eight with this team with like a and I could absolutely see that happening with the defensive talent and the running game that they have and at least like the the weapons on the outside if the like rookie tackles work out you I can absolutely see them winning nine games and Pete Carroll like loving life. In that and, division. And maybe well, a certain segment of the Seahawks fan base actually sort of loving this sort of weird type basically of Basically the pre-Russell Wilson Seahawks. Well. I mean, they uh, like with, with Pete Carroll, they – Beastquake and all that other business. Having low expectations and having them mildly sure, exceeded is way more fun than having right. high expectations and being disappointed. Right. So I'm, I'm, I can live in this you, space. Just like ugly games. I wish I had taken Their that. Their number is five my, and a half. I wish I had taken that. And well, you see them as nine. Yeah, no, they were. They were no. next on my I, list. I they were in my top them, five. But I didn't want to look like a homer. They were in my I, top five. Same, same, yeah. same. Can I, um, uh, can I throw some rapid fire ones at you and you all just no. go around and say over under no explanation, but just to hit a few more teams. Depends what rapid fire means. But yes, yeah. Do four. We'll each do it. All right, go yeah. ahead. Mark, start with you. Oh, I was going to throw out 49ers 10 wins over under. Over. Next. <laughs> yeah, uh, that, that to me was wow. like, okay, that's the right number. Yeah. Colts 10 wins. Greg. I mean, that's another one that just felt like the right number. I'd go over if I had to. Raiders 8.5. I'll bang the over on that. Dolphins 9 wins. That, they were on my really long this list. Is, this is for me. This yeah, is for me. Under. I got. I got under. Oh, I, don't, yeah. I don't feel great about it. But good. Good rapid. That's fire. a tough one. Good job. That's tough. How about the Titans, Grave Digger? Where are we at on your Titans? You're, by the way, are all fired up at the old Zeuser over the oh, Power yeah. Rankings and Traylon Burks? Like, calm down. And, I know. I'm not. I'm not making those reports. I'm citing reports. So what happened from, was NBC Sports Edge picked up a tweet from actually my buddy. World. Yeah, Roto World, whatever they are now, um, picked up a tweet where somebody at Titans camp said that Traylon Burks had caught a few passes with the second and third team quarterbacks and messed up one route assignment. And they reported that Burks is only working with the second and third teams and doesn't know where to line up and all this. It became a huge thing but on Titans Twitter. this is what's Twitter. exhausting about the Titans fans. And I love you guys, all the listeners, but... You can't just chill. I have people coming in my mentions like, all right, Titans Nation, let's get this guy because he's incompetent. <laughs> it's like, chill. chill. Don't get so mad. Is this why you tried to insinuate that I was beefing with the Titans? I thought that because they're kind of a sensitive fan base. They're one of the sensitive fan bases that maybe they were coming after you. That's what annoys them said. when you say that. Yeah. Well, when you say they're sensitive, when you so sensitive. Then, it, sensitive it's and then it, it proves self, to be true, yeah, but it's just like that. Prophecy, you know, it doesn't yeah. sound uh, you yeah. know, uh, positive. Mina Kimes. Uh, what is your what's the over under for the Titans? Nine wins. Where are I you? would say over just because of Mike Vrabel. I mean, I'm biased, obviously. Yeah. Mike Vrabel though has never been worse than nine and seven, and neither has John Robinson going back to 2016. I didn't consider them just because we talk about the Titans I, now I like, so much. We've overcorrected so, so hard. A lot that of they, Titans talk on this more podcast. than any I, I, team. Perhaps. Unlike the Geno Smith topic, which doesn't come up <laughs> right. other than four times a show. Sean Kelly, Eagles over under nine and a half. Oh come on. We go. Yeah, that's going to be an over. Uh, <laughs> shout out to Greg. Thanks for the over pick. Definitely an over there. I mean, just Amina was talking about earlier, just like packing that lineup and the way that there's Where's always the Kelly like an cam? option. The Kelly cam. Oh, it's coming in. Let me bring that it's up. Too late. It's no, too we're late. in. It. We're uh, in. Yeah. We're in. Um, no, it's just they have so many players that they've been like the pickups this past season. Just right. beefing right, up everything. Wrap it up. It's okay. great. Okay. Over. Okay. Keep it going. Good, good, good. All right, Amina Kimes. You've said it all. Wrap it up. And listen, um, <laughs> Mina, we, we don't have a yacht that we can invite you to. Uh, and this is certainly not a negotiation that you're in the building today, but uh, this is for you. Oh, wow. wow. He's handing over a... Oh, I took a, that off someone's desk. An in the NFL room. Network hat. <laughs> but it's never been worn. And uh, if you want to take that as a, a gift, that's all it is. It's the not a... mesh backing. You're not tampering. Are, not you, are tampering. you allowed to wear an NFL Network garb? Oh, God. I was going to put it on unthinkingly. Oh, I mean, oh, you're allowed. caused a little minor controversy there. Let's, uh, let's just say that was a personal gift and nothing more. And when is your contract expired? All right, Stephen Ross. <laughs> <laughs> Mina, thank you so much for joining us. You know where to find me on ESPN, the Mina Kimes Show featuring Lenny, all the other good stuff. Uh, always a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks, guys. All right, and we'll be back. What is today? Wednesday? Yes. We'll be back tomorrow, Thursday. Yeah. We're mixing up the schedule with another show, so make sure to join us. Check out the Hard Knocks podcast. Uh, until then, you know what you got to do. 
Heave the call.